this morning, this lovely Tuesday, 23rd day of November 2021. Let's get today's proverb with Siti Muga. Heri kujikua kidole kuliko ulimi. The English translation is better to stumble with the toe than with the tongue. Heri kujikua kidole kuliko ulimi. Yes. Mm, okay. That is a good one. That is a good one. Now we have the Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, Nduoko with us in the studio. Kenyan by birth and choice, Eric Latif, and C.T. Muga, who is a global citizen. We also have Japan by birth and Kenyan by choice, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Midori Daimon, <laughs> who joins us now. Habari za subuhi, Dr. Nzuri sana, habari za subuhi. Salama kabisa, vizuri kukua na wewe tena siku ya leo. Ya, nimefurahi sana kuwa hapa. Right. We are having a conversation about studying in Japan and Dr. Midori is a study in Japan coordinator with the Study in Japan Global Network Project. Today, we want to look at another university in Japan that offers programs in English and they want as many Kenyans as possible to apply and go and have the understudy uh, projects, undergraduate uh, studies in Japan. Last week, we had a different university and uh, Dr. Midori, you've been telling us there are how many universities in Japan? in almost 800 universities in japan yes and there is a policy by the government of japan to encourage and open up for more foreigners to come and study and live and work in japan and now you are coordinating how many from africa can go and study in japan almost like every year mm -hmm. if possible we'd like to uh, to welcome 500 to 1000 if possible yeah but right now we have in in Japan right now we have almost 2500 students who are studying in Japan from Africa okay yeah and these are studying either from uh, undergrad to postgrad uh, actually uh, postgraduate studies is more popular for mm. Africans so we would like to increase more number uh, of undergraduate students in Japan yeah okay mm. And just for those who may have missed last week's conversation, it is because, again, the policy of Japan, you have an aging population, you want to open up um, for more people to come and interact with the community in Japan. So you go and study in Japan. Then after you finish your studies, you have an opportunity to work and live in Japan. And then the government will facilitate that for you as well. Yes, that's true. Actually, the Japanese government uh they they are also like setting some new visa status for those who who would like to to be employed in japan mm. yeah so even if you don't you can't get the job before you before graduation you can still make one one year to stay there and to find out uh the job opportunities in japan what population of japan uh, are aged above 70? Oh, <laughs> actually, right now, sorry, I don't have specific figure. Okay, we let are, me ask you differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what age bracket in Japan comprises the greatest part of the population? Uh, right now, actually, the most, most of people, the more than, higher than, I uh, know, I mean, older than 60 years old. Mm. That yeah. is the larger number of the population. Yeah, I guess. I'd, I'd but fit, I'd you'd be <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd fit in there <laughs> perfectly. Yeah. Yes. This man is a minority in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Above 60. How many are you? About 200 people. We are an endangered species <laughs> in this country. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> in Japan, you'd be right at home. Last week, you also had a conversation uh, from Japan with two Kenyans who uh, won... Um, both of them are actually working for universities in Japan. Today, we'll speak to one Kenyan who is a student in Japan. Yes. Cynthia Nandua is a ma second year master's student in the Graduate School of Engineering at Kyushu University. And she's joined by Professor Natalie Konomi, who's a manager of the Global Strategies, Strategies Office at the same university. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Hello from Japan. Hello. <laughs> It's good to have you on the line and Asante Nisana for joining us. First, tell us about the Kyushu University, Professor. What, uh, tell us about the university, the history of the university, where it's located, what kind of programs it offers. 
Oh, yes. Um, thank you very much for having us. Um, so Kyushu University is located in the south of Japan, which is um, in Kyushu. And um, here we're located in Fukuoka City, which is a quite, it's the fifth largest city actually in Japan with 1.6 million um, people living there. So it's a very, um, well, not too crowded, but also not empty city. And it's a very beautiful place. And Kyushu University is a national university. Um, we're the fourth oldest university in Japan. We've been established in 1911. And um, yeah, we, we have, well, we're one of the, leading research-oriented university, so we focus a lot on research, but of course also on education of undergraduates. So we have 12 undergraduate schools and um, 18 graduate schools and a university hospital and five research institutes. And we do focus a lot on, um, a lot on science and engineering, for example. So um, yeah, having one goal is having a carbon neutral um, society in the future that's, for example, one focus of our research areas. Um, yeah, I think that's like an over overview <laughs> of the university. Um, we have about um, 18,000, more than 18,000 students. Um, of those 12%, so 2,300 students are international students. And about almost 100 students are from Africa, actually. And from Kenya, we have 14 students, which is the second largest number of students from Africa, and we're very happy that we have Cynthia here with us. Oh, that's actually a mm -hmm. good number. So, Cynthia, you're not alone when you're yes. in Fukuoka. You are basically the, you there with some 13 other Kenyans, so you don't feel like um, you're really, really far from home. So, tell us about your experience. Did you join Kyushu University for undergrad, or did you just go straight into the graduate school? Uh, uh, I joined from the master's program but first i came here as a research student so actually my application was spearheaded by my mom she was the one who sent me the poster for the scholarship and i decided to try my luck and then i applied and then i got the scholarship so i was happy to come here and find that we are a big community so sometimes we can speak in swahili and i feel right at home so it's okay mm. <laughs> What has your experience been vis-a-vis -vis your expectation? I mean, I mean, like you said, it was somebody else who filled the application for you, or rather, you know, prompted you to do so. So then you had an expectation going to another country, going to get an education in a different atmosphere from which you were raised, um, obviously. Uh, but what was your experience going to school and then experiencing a different culture there through education? Uh, at first, I was really worried because I re realized that uh, this is Japan and their common language is Japanese. So I was worried about the language barrier. But when I came here, I was comforted by the fact that my uncle also lives in Japan. So I had family to begin with. And then I, when I started my studies, I realized also there's a very big English community here. So the student support center are ready to help you and they can speak in English. And my classes are in English, so I had no problems at all with my studies. And I think also because I wanted to experience Japan as a whole, I decided to join also at other activities. There's always an event for meeting people, like Japanese people, international people. I decided to try my luck in ballet dancing because it's always been a childhood dream of mine. And even though it's when you start as, a, as an adult, it's difficult, but I think I do okay. So. Mm. <laughs> My experience has been awesome. I like living in Japan. Cynthia, what I'd like to know is, um, have you learned the Japanese language? Yes, actually, I, I learned Japanese language, and Konomi Sensei, she's my Japanese teacher, so she told me survival Japanese. I can go to the supermarket on my own. I don't have any problems. I can go to the restaurant, order food in Japanese. So the Japanese I know, I... I uh, can you write I, a letter in uh, Japan, yeah. uh, and can you, or can you write an essay in Japanese? Oh, that is a totally different case because... Well, I'm making it a case because if you want to immerse yourself in a culture, one of the best ways is to mm -hmm. know the language. So I would encourage yeah. you to learn that language so that you can actually immerse yourself in the Japanese culture fully. Yeah, but that, that's my goal. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm learning kanji. So I can write because they have free writing systems. There's the hiragana and katakana and kanji. So hiragana and katakana, I can do those. I can write in hiragana and katakana. But kanji is the one that is 
it's just I just ask myself what are these figures? You know, they have strokes and they have orders, so it's I can recognize them, but maybe writing now is a challenge. But at least with technology, we have uh, like when you type in the computer, you can feel it for you. So sometimes I text in Japanese with the use of the technology, you know? <laughs> not by myself. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. What are the other 13 Kenyan students uh, doing there? What are they studying? And how long have they been there? Oh, actually, most of them. Yeah, most of them are actually studying engineering. Um, some are in economics and law, but I think yeah, most of the Kenyan students are actually in engineering. Mm. Um, they do their masters here. Um, yeah, master and doctors. And um, well, actually, at our university, we have five undergraduate programs where the students can come and they can get their degree only in English language. So before they come to Japan, they don't need to know Japanese at that point. So mm -hmm. once they are in Japan, we, of course, recommend they take classes here at our university, which are for free, of course. So um, that's a good thing, I guess. And then for the graduate programs as well, everything um, can be done in English language only. So we have the international graduate program. So, but yeah, as you said, once, once you come to Japan, it's definitely very important to start in the language mm. and it just makes life much more fun here mm. i prof, agree right <laughs> prof from your experience what have students then gone on to do after their education at kyushu so they finish uh, even if they go to an extended program whether it's graduate or thereafter what job market then has been available or where have you seen former students then being employed for example or what have they gone into after their studies Right. So for our African students, to be honest, a lot of the Kenyan students, they um, they actually come on the JICA program. So they return to Kenya. Then um, others, well, other in general, international students, if they, if they go into an undergraduate program, they like to continue studying in Japan for a master degree. Those in the graduate program, when they graduate, well, they, we have those who decide actually to stay in Japan and work for a larger Japanese company. So the job opportunities are, are quite, the prospects are very good for graduates of Kyushu University. But like a lot of students also like to go home and return to the home country. Mm. And from Cynthia, yeah, I know that she's looking for a job right now in Japan. So, yeah. <laughs> Many of the times when we have this question, uh, with these conversations, um, people would like to know, what um, kind of money do they need? How much is the fees? Uh, what's the cost of living in um, Fukuoka like? Uh, is, it, uh, is it comparable to the other cities, for example, in Japan? So talk, tell us a bit about that, uh, Professor. Yes, well, so the living expense or the expenses in general um, in Japan are, of course, higher than in other countries. Um, and um, so... We're a national university, so our tuition fee is not as high as for private um, universities. And that's a good thing about the national universities. So undergraduates, for example, pay about 535,000 Japanese yen, which is, I think in Kenya and Chile, it's almost the same number. Mm. Um, and then graduates, it's the same amount per year. And um, for the living expenses, for living in Fukuoka, actually, Fukuoka is very famous for being the city with the lowest rent and food costs of, in, of large cities in Japan. Um, so we're about 20% cheaper as, for example, Tokyo, which makes it a little bit easy, easier, a little bit. And um, so the monthly um, expenses for just living in Japan would be about 80,000 Japanese yen to about up to 115,000 Japanese yen, of course, depending on your lifestyle. So it would be, I think, about 730 US dollars upwards. Um, yeah, so that's, that's about the expenses you have to calculate. Mm. So many students come on scholarship and do part-time jobs at the same time um, to be able to afford it. Sure. What kind of scholarships are yeah. on offer? Um, so we have, of course, the MEC scholarship, the government scholarship, which is the best scholarship ever and very, very competitive. So once, you know, I always tell students they should definitely try apply for it when mm. if they get it it makes your life so much easier um and then we have about 70 other different kinds of private organizations and foundations giving scholarships um i do have to point out though that most of these scholarships they, you can only apply once you come to japan and enroll which mm. makes it a little bit difficult for international students always um i know they rather have 
you know, know in advance that they will get the scholarship. The chances are quite good um, to get a scholarship, especially um, some regions in Africa, to be honest. Hmm. So would you uh, say yeah, that there is enough... I think actually a scholarship with Oh, right. Okay. So then I guess it's a, a double question to both of you then. So in terms of support, then is it enough for those who would be worried that, all right, this seems like something I want to pursue, but I'm not able to afford it. So is there adequate support to then be able to fill in the gaps that, you know, uh, um, money wouldn't? And then on the other hand, what is the journey then that would be for you, Cynthia? How difficult or easy then was it to access scholarship to access this support that would essentially help you uh, pay for your tuition and, and other things? Uh, so like I am on the MEC scholarship. So my journey for this scholarship took uh, approximately one year because there were many stages. There was like a, uh, a information stage where we were told about the scholarship and what you need to do when you're applying and then you needed to submit the application. So after your application is accepted, you needed to do the English exam and the Japanese exam. But the Japanese exam was just to know about your level of Japanese so that they know if you need uh, to take classes when you come here. So at that time, I didn't know any Japanese, so I was just doing my guesswork. <laughs> but then they, when you do the English test, I think this is the one they concentrate on. So at least you need to be able to uh, read, write, and speak in English. And then after this stage, when you pass the stage, they give you like a certificate. So with the certificate now, you need to find universities that you need you can enroll. And then the universities will send you a letter of acceptance. And then you get the letter of acceptance, you take to the embassy. And then after that, now the embassy, they give you the scholarship. And afterwards, you come to Japan. So it took one year. And after you come here, I think... Uh, the living the student stipend is enough to live on. You can actually survive mm -hmm. with this money. But if you feel like you, you need more money, it's easy to find a part-time job or your free time. Maybe you can work during weekends, mm -hmm. like five hours a day, and then you get your extra money and then you survive. But you can actually just survive on the student stipend. It's okay. That's good. Cynthia Nandoa, a Kenyan second year master student in the Graduate School of Engineering at Kyushu University and Professor Natalie Konomi, manager of the Global Strategies Office at the same university in Fukuoka, Japan. So just looking up Fukuoka to so just understand um, it's known for ancient temples, beaches and modern shopping malls, including Canal City. Maizuru Park contains runs of 17th century Fukuoka Castle, the central Hakaka district, Hakata, contains a temple which is home to a 10-meter wooden Buddha and a Hakata Miecha Folk Museum. So tell us about the life and culture then of uh, Fukuoka as we then get to entice us about coming to visit and study there, Cynthia. What have you experienced so far in terms of just going around the city? What have you found that's quite interesting? Oh... I think I've been everywhere. Oh, not not everywhere, but I think Fukuoka is uh, a big, uh, like a town. Like, for example, in Tianjin, I go window shopping in Tianjin. I visited the Buddha that you've just mentioned, and it's really huge when you see it from like face to face. And uh, in, it was in Fukuoka that I had my first experience uh, dancing ballet, like I mentioned earlier. So, and I have been able to meet many international students. Like now, I have global friends. So I think you can never lack anything to do in Fukuoka. There's even like uh, it, beaches. My house is to be around a beach. So every morning I go jogging and I just enjoy the morning sunrise. And then at night I can go and enjoy the sunset. So I think it's, life is good here. You should definitely <laughs> encourage people to come. Yeah. I get you. <laughs> Listening to you speak, I am I'm enticed. I'd like to visit that city because you seem happy with the city, excited with what you're seeing. <laughs> and anyone listening to you would feel, I, I need to go to this place. Mm. That's making Cynthia so happy. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. But you should. So, Cynthia, let <laughs> me ask the question. Since we're talking about this awesome place, would you consider staying there? Or mm. when you finish your course, would you like to rush back to Kenya? Or would you want to perhaps now pursue a PhD? Uh, actually, maybe not PhD, but for me, I was thinking along the lines of finding a job, especially in Fukuoka. If I get in Fukuoka, I will be very happy to find a job because I I, I love you here. I want I want to stay. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll come, I I will come home for visiting, but I 
definitely I'm thinking about living in Japan for the Cynthia, long you don't long sound like you're going to come home soon. <laughs> <laughs> I will come home because I miss home. I, I, actually, I, I miss home. I remember my first, first days here. I was so homesick. But I, I always get the consolation that I'm going to go home one day. So, <laughs> yeah, I will come home because... There's a saying that says, it's east or west, home is the best. So I will definitely come home. But for working purposes, I'm thinking about Fukuoka mm. as my number one. If you were to compare <laughs> where you live now to a uh, town city in Kenya, um, in terms of size, what, mm -hmm. would you, wh what would you compare it to? Like, you mean in terms of size? Yeah, mm. which, which town or city in Nairobi, uh, in Kenya, would you compare it to? In terms of size size maybe nice hmm? i'm not how how big is <laughs> 1.5 1. 1. million uh, because but, but, yeah one million people i think maybe nairobi mm. Mm. Nairobi, Nairobi is four million. Nairobi, 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 Nairobi has four million, million people. people. <laughs> just, yeah, 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 you know, just so that you uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's around three times the number of people that you have in that city, but you know. The thing yeah. about cities and the things that makes them unique are the things that you're saying, the things that people remember about it, the things mm. that people experience. Because from what I hear yeah. you saying, you haven't actually said it loudly, you feel safe, you feel welcomed, you feel like... And that's why you'd like to stay. It's, it's like home away yeah. from home. Now... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I, I am going to take a stab and say, so if let's say you have three other siblings and uh, maybe 10 other relatives mm -hmm. would you uh encourage mm -hmm. them to also apply and come and uh, study and work in japan yeah i would and i i actually have been doing that <laughs> ah, see the, 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 she's encouraging people to my uh -huh. mm -hmm. she's hmm. kenyan this is definitely <laughs> yes <laughs> when my scholarship they open every year and every year i've been here when i see the scholarship i always send it to people back home i'm like please apply this scholarship is open try your luck and come to japan so i always encourage people to come <laughs> uh professor there's something i'd like to ask in the time that you have been in that university one what course ha courses have you found to be popular with students generally that's one two what courses have you found to be popular with the African students? So, to be honest, it's quite similar, actually. Um, a lot of the students really, really are interested in engineering-related subjects. So, the engineering courses are very popular. But we also have a lot of students in our, well, agriculture area, like bioenvironment, for example, are very popular courses. Um, as I mentioned, we're very much focusing on environment-related issues and sciences here. So, for example, um, anything related to fuel cells or um, carbon-neutral societies. Um, like, also, though, from a different, like, from the point of economics, so the interdisciplinary point as well is very important. But mm. engineering, to be honest, engineering and computer science are, yeah, sort of the most popular ones. Okay. With a lot of the students and especially the students from Kenya. Yeah. Mm. Now, I'm thinking of the courses that are popular and I'm thinking of the industrial might of Japan and the industries that uh, Japan is known for. Do we have any such giant industries in that uh, uh, city? Yes, in that city. Uh, I'm, I'm asking, do, do, do we have huge industries in that city? Oh, yeah, so in Fukuoka City, we also have a lot of, um, yeah, it's, it's like also we'll have a lot of industries here. Um, yeah, there's in various areas, so car-related um, and also, well, shipbuilding, for example, as well, because we're, we're also close to the ocean. Um, so Kyushu area has a lot of industry, and Kyushu University is working a lot with um, the industry. And, yeah, and that's why the, I guess the career process is so good also for our students once they graduate. Because there are really, really many, many opportunities. If they're in chemistry, they go maybe to like, uh, like a pharmaceutical company, or I mean, there are just really, really so many opportunities. Coming it's, to you, yeah, Midori. it covers anything in high tech. Right, coming to you, Midori. Okay. Um, to have an education outside of Kenya, coming into Japan, uh, and then for those who decide to come back, 
-hmm. And because you mentioned engineering, uh, Professor mentioned mm -hmm. um, engineering is one of the big, one of the ones that a lot of students go for. To be able to come back to Kenya and practice, mm -hmm. and there's obviously certain certification that you need to go through to then come back and practice here in Kenya, for example, or any other country. Mm -hmm. Are there guarantees that as you're going and getting this education that you would have filled out the prerequisites or the minimum requirements for then further certification if you choose to come and practice? Because we've had some iffy situations before. People mm. go study somewhere else, come back, you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. But then there are certain things that you are not trained for, so you cannot practice. Are there guarantees that, you know, you come study in Japan, you can come back to Kenya and you'll be all right to work? And the professional bodies that require you to have this minimum okay. will be satisfied. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, what what I know about uh, the the engineering, I never heard about those uh, those problem, mm -hmm. which is not not like qualified in Kenya. But it uh, when you have the degree from Japan, and then actually, but there's some problem. Sometimes if you come back here in in Kenya, there's the research research environment or like some labo, laboratory environment is a bit different from Japan. So sometimes the facility is not enough for continuing their research mm -hmm. more here in Kenya. So they are, they are, those people, they are trying to, to connect, they are connect with Japanese scholars, even they come back here, and then they try to get good facilities here to set up their environment in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But another thing about, if you think about medicine, yeah, actually that medi medicine, um, if you go to graduate studies in medicine, it's fine. You can study there in Japan in English, and then you can come back with the techniques and skills to come back your home country. But if you think about the, the license of medical doctor, actually in Japan still they are offering, uh, they're offering license for those who can, who can work in Japan as a doctor. So if you come back with that license, medical license, doctor license, you have to you have to change it to Kenyan doctor medis, medical certificate uh, medical license. Yeah, that is only one which you have to think about. Yeah. I know we talk about studying in Japan and then uh, working and living there. Mm -hmm. But is the other side also possible? Say like you've said you're a trained doctor in this country and you'd like to go and work in Japan, mm -hmm. is it possible, is it easy for you to apply for for that? Uh, you mean Visa and work permit. So you're just a doctor, you're already trained, you mm -hmm. are a qualified doctor here. Okay. You, you've already studied, you even have um, a master's and you've specialized in a certain field. Can you, is it easy for you to apply and go and work in Japan? Or I'm is this restricted to only the people who first study in Japan and then they make it, find it easier to work? Actually, there's no restriction about those job uh, job opportunities, whether you have, uh, you studied there in Japan or you study here. But actually, there's some conditions which you have to to follow. Sometimes you you need to be uh, you need to be qualified. What what you have and and what what they they, they require you mm. a bit different. And also, if you if you study there, you know the system how how to get job there in japan mm. and so it's very easier to make the successful uh, interview job interview or like good skills they can show it and also that maybe connection japanese japanese people's connection yep. with you is also very important if you go there and study you can you, you can develop get the, yeah, develop the network there's also something that you've told us before, which is there are very many Japanese companies that are based in Japan, but they also have offices in other parts of the world mm -hmm. where if you went and studied and then started working in Japan, you can actually even be posted by these companies into other countries. Just tell us a bit about that. Oh, okay. Now, actually, in Kenya, also there are many, many Japanese companies. They have branch here. And then also, of course, there are, they are hiring employees, in Ke uh, Kenyan employees, local staff. And yeah, that, that one, they, they, they don't require you to first study in Japan or what, what. But it's good to know that job, 
environment. So sometimes they prefer someone who already studied in Japan because they know some some uh, okay communication skills mm. in Japanese way, and also they have customs in Japanese way. Yeah, but they, of course, if you come back after graduation, when you come back here in Kenya or other countries in Africa, uh, you can see that some opportunities for uh, Japanese companies or maybe Embassy of Japan. Yeah. Mm. That's true. You know, as you say this, uh, what I keep thinking of is um, <clears throat> you have a situation where you have Japanese companies working on the continent of Africa. And if a company's origins is a certain country, one of the things that you will come with to this host country is the cultures and the way you do things. Mm. Now, is there a program that enables one Let's say you talked about somebody from Kenya just being employed. Mm -hmm. Is there a way in which somebody can actually be inducted into the culture and the ways in which the, the Japanese handle their business, how they go about the things that they do? Because if, say today, I am employed by a Japanese company, I will come in there with all my Kenyan and tribal cultures into that Japanese company. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I will be doing things which I think are correct and the way I should do them. But they may be contrary completely mm. to the way the Japanese look at things. Mm. So is there a program that inducts one into this culture so that one can at least work with minimum fuss and minimum interference? Okay, I actually those program <laughs> right now I can't <laughs> I can't say it in details, but uh, okay, that's actually what well, according to my understanding, yes. Japanese companies they are they are when they come here they are they are also trying to to uh try they, they would like to like require the Ken, uh, kenyan or local people to follow our policy but at the same time they are trying to study their way kenyan's way or mm. local people's way mm. so like it's good like uh, there's i don't know whether there is a program which you can <laughs> you can start you can learn about the how japanese <laughs> japanese uh, job policy or customs but they can still if if you are employed you still like uh, negotiate with them and then study and also like we learn each other and then to develop their opportunities the reason why i ask mm -hmm. this is uh, if say someone is an expert in a certain field mm -hmm they will believe they have the knowledge in that field. Yeah. And usually, people who work with them and probably do not have their level of knowledge will need to up their game so that they can be at that same level. For instance, you talk about technology. Mm. Okay, I look at the Japanese technology that I've seen in the bridges that they've built in this country. Mm. Okay, Up until the time those bridges were put up, I personally had never seen such bridges before. I mean, I'd seen bridges, but not that sort of bridge. <laughs> like which one? Uh, like when they put that Nyali bridge, mm. before that Nyali bridge was put up, I had never seen a bridge like that in my life. Mm -hmm. When the Sabaki River bridge was put up, I had never seen a bridge like that in my life. But having seen one, I could now look at the technology and say, yeah, I, I can see how this works. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is, there is the idea of technology transfer and the way you go about things. Mm. I live in a place that has a very interesting contraption, Okay. It's called a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Now, traffic lights were supposed to replace a roundabout. Mm -hmm. But this place where I live in, in a very small space, there are three roundabouts. Not one or two, three. Now, that road was built by the Japanese. Now, what I find interesting, there's one traffic light at one spot. There's, there are three. One, two, three. But the roundabout, the idea of a roundabout and how this works, what I found fascinating is it actually complements the what? The street light. Now, that's technology. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody thought this thing through and determined. Now, I haven't, again, seen it anywhere else. In most places, if there's a roundabout, it's replaced by a traffic light. Mm -hmm. uh, or, 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 or have, have I got this wrong? Mm -hmm. It's usually what happens. Now, the reason I'm giving this example is this. Mm -hmm. Cultures are not so much about just the way people do things is the way about yeah. the way they think mm -hmm. okay it's your thought processes that are expressed in the things that you do mm -hmm. now 
The Germans have a German school mm. and they have the Goethe Institute. The French have the Alliance. Mm. Do the Japanese have a cultural center when somebody can actually learn Japanese and understand the ways of the, of the Japanese? Here in Kenya? Here in Kenya. Uh, in Kenya, now, actually, Embassy of Japan has a Japanese culture center. So there's a library and also there's some events for culture, culture, Japanese culture. So you can go and study, but the, and also Japanese, Japanese language class. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, they used to have right now, I don't know because of COVID-19 situation, but uh, there's many opportunity we can, you can learn from, uh, from website or from their library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's only in Nairobi. Yeah, actually in Nairobi. But I know that many, uh, many high schools and also primary schools in Kenya, around Kenya, the, some, some schools have Japanese club. Actually, I was going there. Thank uh, you for th uh, so thank you for going there before. Uh, <laughs> before me, the, the, that's okay. where I was heading. Ah, uh, sorry, yes. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can know. So, so, so we looked at you know the, the language possibly being a, a barrier. And uh, professor, you talked about you know that you know Japanese classes being offered for free. Yeah. Uh, yes. While you are at school, mm. so you have the opportunity to learn, mm. right? Yes. Uh, and so then that shouldn't be a problem. So for you, Cynthia, uh, going to uh, Japan the first time and not speaking an, 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 any Japanese whatsoever. Uh, tell us a little bit in Japanese how you what you have learned where you started at zero and now you are speaking a little bit of it that you can actually go through school. <laughs> okay. Not so that I would understand a word here, of what you were I... saying, but you know. <laughs> When I came here, I only know I only knew Konnichiwa, but now I can say Hajimemashite, watashi Shinshiya desu. Kenya kara kimashita. Watashi no shumi wa bare to karaoke desu. Azoku wa junin imasu. How do you say yes? Uh, you know, I, I've listened to that entire thing. She has what she has said. The only thing I got was karaoke. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. <laughs> There's something that you've you said part. earlier, uh, Prof. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm not Japanese. So. <laughs> okay. Professor, you said earlier that um, your university, Kyushu University, is really focused on engineering and research. It's big on engineering and research. Now, I'm assuming that it then complements what the city of Fukuoka does. Are there many engineering companies and research companies in that city? Yes, of course, there are many in Fukuoka itself as well, but also in Kyushu, the whole well, large island in mm. the south of Japan. Well, I, island always sounds kind of small, but it's a huge island. <laughs> um, of course, but many students also decide to go up to Tokyo or other cities, um, Osaka. But yes, yeah, Fukuoka has really good opportunities, I think, for the students. And um, yeah, so yeah, we do have, I, I mean, I, I kind of always mention it in engineering, but it's not only engineering, of course. Um, but so Fukuoka also is trying to um, like emphasize a lot of startup companies. That's something that Fukuoka City is focusing at the moment on. So we do have a lot of young people who want to become entrepreneurs and also international students who are thinking about, you know, setting up their own company, which will be also something interesting, I think. You know, the when I hear of a place like uh, Kyushu, how do you pronounce it again? Kyushu, yeah, Kyushu. Kyushu, Kyushu. Yeah. Yes, Kyushu. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I find amazing is that in 1911, that's the previous century, somebody had actually thought of coming up with an institution of higher learning and that the institution has somehow meshed into the development of that particular business ecosystem and industrial ecosystem to the point where now other people are being invited to enjoin in that success. Now, if, if you were asked, Professor, to advise a third world banana republic like ours, that is Kenya, uh, on how it is to grow, what would you say are the key ingredients uh, that you would need when you're thinking of creating uh, a curriculum for university courses and hoping that this thought process would 
lead to growing the country in their commercial as well as industrial interests? Well, I think whatever we set up, I think it's really important that we like train like creativeness. Like the people have to think open and really innovative to start something new for their for their countries. So um, I think that's one thing how it works for Fukuoka and for Japan in general. It was always trying to innovate something and create something new. Um, and in Fukuoka, for example, we did have um, we're very famous because we had like a, we also called the Gateway City for diplomacy and trading with Asian countries, because we did work a lot with our neighboring countries. Um, so yeah, I'm totally blabbing away and not really answering your question, I think. <laughs> but I think, it, yeah, in a, like just train the people to be creative and innovative and, you know, think and come up with ideas um, from like really young age, I think. Okay, so we want to thank you very much for joining us today in this conversation. And now, as we conclude this, those who have been listening and they'd like, you know, to get more information about your university, Kyushu University, and also know how to apply uh, for whatever programs and also for scholarships, how do they go about this, Professor? So they're very welcome to check our website. We have the Kyushu University website um, where we get a lot of information how they can get their scholarships. And you can download a lot of the pamphlets on the internet um, telling you everything on how to apply. Mm. If someone is interested in getting, like entering the graduate school, they, for example, have to first contact the professor actually at Kyushu University. And they can get information about the professor also on our website. So I think most schools you can find on our website. Mm. And I hope the link is somewhere. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely through our website. Okay. But also, um, Midori-san, for people who would like to know about all the other 800 or so universities in Japan, mm -hmm. they can come to your website. What's your website? Yes. Uh, our website is www.studyinjapan-africa.com. Studyinjapan-africa.com. So if you come to our website, you can also see many universities' information. Also, we have SNS, Facebook, you at Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. So you can also uh, visit our SNS so that you can also get the Kyushu University's university uh, to information and also other universities' information. Sante sana. Yeah, Thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning, Professor Natalie Economy and uh, Cynthia Nandua. Have a good day and good afternoon in uh, Japan. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And uh, Dr. Midori Daimon, the Study in Japan coordinator with the Study in Japan Global Network. Thank you for joining us again today. Yeah. Asante sana. Next week we have more Kenyans from a different university. Yeah. Ah, that's a good thing. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.